ISAT students, welcome back. It's Chase with Star Tutors, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you for tuning in to watch the secrets of the SAT and learning more about the scaling and the scoring for the SAT exam. It's very, very different from anything that you guys have taken or seen in school. And so we really think that this video is just, it's, it's extremely valuable in, in terms of how you're preparing for the exam. Uh, it's actually the reason, and, and we have a student that says this, she's at Cal Berkeley now, and I'll talk a little bit more about her, I'm sure, as we go. We've actually had a student say that this one video, what we're about to talk about today, was the reason that she improved her score by 540 points. And it's the first thing that we always talk about in all of our classes. I, I just can't stress how important it is to understand the differences between the scaling and the scoring uh, between a test that you take in school and a test that you take like the SAT or the ACT exam. So again, uh, this we're going to be talking about the April 2019 test. So the April 2019 in-school test, if you don't have that test uh, or if you don't have the scoring guide, like the scale scores, you can find those links uh, in the comment section or in the bio below. So please, please click those and make sure that you have those pulled open uh, so that you can follow along with the video and that you kind of understand where we're going with this. It's again, so important that you understand how, how this SAT exam scoring works because it will allow you to move on from questions. It will allow you to take all of that anxiety and stress off of this test. And it always comes in that form of like, God, my friend got this score. Everybody has that friend that got like a 1500 the first time. And you're like, oh, like, how am I ever going to get there? It, it's some students can do that and that's fine, but it doesn't mean that you can't get there. And, and it, that my whole, my whole perspective on this change when we had this one student who improved her score from, uh, it was a 970, I think it was a 970 to a 1510 over the course of 54 weeks because of what we talked about on the first day of one of our classes and it, as it pertained to the scale. She, she set a goal for herself and she went from a 970, which is, which is right around the national average, to a 1510, which is in the top 0.8% of the country, top 1% of the country. It's amazing that she was able to do that and it really changed my perspective on how important it is to understand this scale and score and I really do believe that this is the secret to the SAT and in terms of improvement. Okay, so again, we're going to be on the April 2019 SAT scale. The link is in the bio. Just click, make sure that you click that and you have it open. But what you guys will see here is you guys will see the actual table that's used to, to score the SAT exam. So as an example, let's, we're going to look at the math section, but this applies to all, all three sections or all four sections. The math score is combined between the math with a calculator and the math without a calculator score. So let's take a look at the math score first. Okay, so you'll see this in this column, right? Math score. Uh, we see the raw score here. So when you guys are calculating your SAT exam score, if you're wondering how they might calculate your SAT exam score, here's how they do it. The math no calculator test, which is section number three of the SAT exam, has 20 total questions. And the math with a calculator section, which is the fourth section, the, the last section, has 38 total questions. And for those great at math out there, 20 plus 38 is equal to 58. And that's the number that's reflected way down here at the bottom. And you guys will see that that corresponds to an, a score of 800 on the exam. Now that's how we think in school. Everybody thinks like 100%, I did so well on the test because I got 100%, I got an A plus, right? Or for me, I was, as those have watched our videos before, or classes before, for me, if I got an 80%, I was like, yeah, that's nice, great job, Chase, right? But, but again, it's so important that you understand how this is so different from a school test. What I want you guys to recognize is that 58 is an 800, but if you come down here to let's say a 700, Okay, a 700 on the SAT math section is in like the top, let's say the top 4% of all students that take the math test. The top 4%. Okay, so we're looking at the top 4% of all students that take this test. Now, even better, if you come down to the 650 mark, so if you get a 650 on the math section, that's equal to, let's say, a top, top 10 to 12%. I'm not sure of the exact number off the top of my head, but let's say it's a top 10 to 12%, somewhere in there for sure within that range. Guys, if we come back up here and look at a 650 and what it takes to get a 650 on the math test, you only need 45 out of 58 questions. 45 out of 58 questions. Now, what does that tell us? 45 out of 58 questions. What that tells us is that a 45 out of 58 on, the, on our test in school, that would be like an 80, no, that would be even lower. That'd be like a 79%. Okay, that's a C plus in school. But what I just told you is that if you're capable of getting that on the SAT math test, 
you're in the top, let's say, let's just call it top 10. Okay, let's say top 10%, you get a 90%. And what that means is that, that this test, just, just for signing your name, you've probably heard that, but look at this. Just for signing your name, right, and getting zero questions right, you get 200 points. And that's reflective of what a scale score is. Okay, and so when you look down here and you see that you get 45 questions right, 45 out of 58, like if they were scoring this like they do in school, like you missed this many points and this is how many points were available, you got a 79%, you get a C plus. There's no scale in that. On the SAT, there's a huge scale. Uh, what would be the equivalent of a 79% in school is actually a 90% on a standardized test like the SAT. So then what's your job? Well, your job then is to figure out if you're not already in the top 10%, how do I get to the top 10%? How do I maximize my score? And this is what that student that, that improved her score by, so, by 540 points, this is how she thought about the exam. What you'll see as well is that you guys, so, so in terms of how she thought about it, every single one of these questions, and this is, on, this is true of every, almost every section at almost every level, right? It varies a little bit, but almost every section of the test varies in the, same, in the sense that every question is worth 10 points. So every question you answer correctly is worth 10 points, plus 10 points for every question. So if you're at, like, let's say you're at a 35, or if you're at where this student started, right? This student who improved her score so much, she thought to herself, okay, if I just memorize one concept per week for one year, that's 52 weeks, one concept, meaning I'll get one more question right, I'll get 52 questions more que I'll get 52 additional questions right for my first practice test, which is the equivalent of 520 points. That's how she thought about the exam and it allowed her and that's exactly what she did. She actually did it for 54 weeks, I think she said. She may have been I don't know how long exactly it was, but yeah, about a year she improved her score 54 5 sorry, 540 points because she was just thinking, how do I improve by one question per week? Just one. That takes so much stress and anxiety off the test, and it allows you to answer 45 questions correctly to get a 79%, but, again, but there's more. It's like an infomercial, right? Like Billy Mays, you guys probably are too young to remember Billy Mays, but it's Billy Mays here, right? There's more. If you get 45 questions right, but you're accurate on those 45, you find the 45 that you know how to do. In, in reality, if you can get 41 questions right, and guess on the remaining questions, you'll probably make up that gap. But somewhere in there, between 41 and 45 questions, right? If you can be accurate and then guess the exact same letter for those, for those multiple choice questions on the math test, if you can guess the same letter down all the way through, you get an additional four points, for, for rather four questions, which is 40 points. So in reality, you have to get like, let's say 41 out of 58 questions. That's a D plus in school. But because there's a standardized test like this and it's multiple choice, in reality, that's, that's probably closest to a 650, which again is around the 90th percentile for those taking the math test. The more you understand the scale and understand how this test works, the better you're going to do on it. I mentioned already in this video that I was not a very good student because I, I didn't do the stuff outside. I was never the student that, that put in the time and the effort each week that I needed to in order to continue to improve. But one of the things I did really well as a student was I always knew how to do the bare minimum and still get the grade. And that's the same thing here. Like I always knew exactly the score that I needed in order to earn a B minus rather than a C plus or an A minus. And I was always right on the cusp of everything. But the same thing applied to the SAT and the ACT when I took these when I was your age is that when I looked at things like, like a 650, I knew exactly how many questions I needed to get in order to get my goal score. And I never pushed past that. I was never the student that was going to get the perfect score on the test, but I was pretty capable of getting something like a 750 maybe, 770 on the math test, solely because I just knew I had to answer a certain amount of questions and the other six questions didn't matter. If I took the six or six to 10 minutes that I was going to spend on those six questions that I probably didn't know how to do anyway, I took all that stress off because I wouldn't be looking at any hard questions. I'd only be doing the ones I knew how to do. I took six to 10 minutes and I applied that to the rest of my test to make sure that I was accurate, to make sure that I wasn't stressed, that I wasn't anxious, anything like that. All of a sudden, guys, your score is, is wildly higher than you probably thought it would be because you understand the scale. You understand what the expectations are going into the test. 
And everything you don't know, and this, again, this is if you're trying to get to, let's say, a, anywhere below maybe an 800, you, you realize what you don't know. You, you kind of, you sit back on your pride. You realize what you don't know. And you're just like, you know what? I'm going to try to get 52 questions right. And then I'll guess on the last six. And hopefully I get one or two of those right. And now I'm at a 750. A 750 uh, on the, uh, or in the SAT math section is in the top 1% to 2% of everybody that takes the exam. It, again, if, if you take that stress, I had no stress or anxiety in school. And while that was horrible for school, it was great for a test like this because it allowed me to just sit back and, and answer questions that I knew how to do. And every time I would come across a question that I didn't know how to do, I'd be like, well, that's just one of the six or that's just one of the 10. Whatever, and you can just move on from it. So I hope that this has all made sense. And if you guys have any questions, I know this, is, this might be a little bit much, particularly if you haven't seen the SAT ever before. But if you can take a step back and just recognize that you don't need to answer so many questions correctly like you do in school to still get a great score, you'll be, you'll be amazed at how easy it is on test day to move on from questions that you don't know how to do and be extremely accurate on all the questions you do know how to do, which will then maximize your score. So again, guys, if you have any questions or concerns about anything we've talked about, please don't hesitate to comment below. We love answering your questions. After you're done taking the April 2019 test, don't forget that we've created advanced score reports that will not only grade your test for you, so you can see that in the, in the comments or the description below as well, it will grade the test and it will tell you which types of questions you're missing, which can then be applied to our Star U tutoring app, which is free of charge. And you can actually go in and do practice problems on the app that correspond to the questions that you missed on this test. And finally, we've actually taken every section of this test in real time. So you can watch our teachers and tutors take this test in real time. So what we encourage you guys to do is take a look at this video, right? Think about it. Think about how the scale works. Then take the actual April 2019 test, which is posted below. Then plug it into the score report. And we'll explain all this again in the, in the description below. Plug it into the score report. Then to start, do pra start doing practice problems on those types of questions you missed. And then watch us take the exact same test. I know it seems like a ridiculous process, but it's not. And I want you guys to try to apply it because you can do this on your own. You can self-study on your own in very easy ways. If all of this is making sense and if you're asking the right, right questions of us, and we're happy to answer any of those questions as, as they come in on the comments section. So again, guys, I hope all of this made sense. If you have any questions for us, please let us know. Download the Star U app. I promise it'll make a big difference. Check out our other videos of us taking these practice, the SAT practice sections in real time. Uh, if you have any questions for us, let us know. Otherwise, we hope to see you guys in one of our programs soon or watching another one of our videos soon. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Good luck on your next SAT exam, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.